uh, that are uh, <coughs> relevant today. I'm not going to repeat it. Uh, I'm instead going to talk about a research paper that addresses one, one topic Rahul didn't mention explicitly, flow. Um, so uh, this is work by uh, uh, JJ Zhao, she is also here, she will be presenting a poster uh, later today. Um, so very much agree with Rahul on, on the situational uh, video, so this is really like the, the, the problem we're facing. And there are not many, uh, I think basically none, uh, methods in the literature that can address uh, this problem accurately. Right? So really precisely identifying where does the action start, where does the object interact with the actor and, and can we label it appropriately. So, um, where are we? So basically the default approach in, in action classification and action detection is the so-called uh, two-stream uh, tactic. So this has been uh, proposed. You do the same thing on the optical flow stream and you combine the two uh, in the end. So this has been a tactic that many people uh, follow. Also in uh, action detection, where we draw a box uh, uh, as well. This is the default approach. Um, video, video is already computationally intense. Uh, what we do, we add another modality, so we double the computation. So everybody has been doing this because what we get out of it is a small uh, but significant increase in accuracy which gives us the bold number in the table in the end so we all uh, play the game of, of increasing the number. Um, so we want to get rid of this flow uh, step while keeping the benefits. Is it possible? Um, so flow is useful, right? So here we have uh, a person that is dancing but it's unclear from the static RGB uh, frame only whether the person will stand up or uh, sit down. When we use the flow information, that gives a strong uh, prior on where the action will go. So rather than having a two-stream uh, network, we propose uh, a two-in-one uh, stream. Right? So the key idea is here to use uh, optical flow during training and to learn how to modulate an RGB frame in such a way that the, the pixels that are relevant for the motion get enhanced in the RGB uh, representation so you keep the benefit of the motion without having the pain of learning a separate network uh, for it. And we just uh, plug this in into off-the-shelf uh, pipelines for action classification or action uh, detection. So basically two, uh, two additions. The first one is a motion uh, condition uh, layer and this motion condition layer basically generates simple uh, motion maps, consider this like motion features from your optical flow input, right? Uh, now flow images are sparse, so we use a simple one by one uh, convolution or three by three, this is sufficient. Then these motion uh, layers from the input for a motion modulation layer and in this model modula modulation layer we learn how we learn affine transformation parameters alpha and beta that learn to modify this motion modulation into the RGB, right? It's pretty simple. This is what it looks like. So in the top row, you see uh, an optical flow uh, image with motion condition maps. And these are the learned parameters, uh, beta and gamma for your uh, modulation. Then we move to the RGB stream. So here we have an RGB image and RGB feature maps before uh, modulation. And this is after modulation, and as you can see, things that move uh, get enhanced in the RGB stream, so we have achieved what we want to achieve. What is the benefit? So we have done some uh, ablations where we com compare an RGB stream, a flow stream, a traditional two stream and our two in one stream. And of course we can also add flow on top of our two in one stream and then you have a two in one two stream. Um, <laughs> we, we need a bold number in the table too, you know, so that is the um, so this is what, what you get. So it's on par with two stream, I would say. But the nice thing is this. So you get, you get it for half uh, the computation, just so you have gained uh, a lot uh, here. Um, it's also, for action classification, we can also do it. Um, <laughs> slightly worse than two in one. Uh, but you get the same uh, speed up, and if you add the two in one stream, it's on par. Um, 
where should you modulate uh, in your network? So you can do it basically after every convolutional uh, layer. And you can also combine uh, the modulation. We find that basically modulation is done best early on uh, in the network. The additional benefit is then that you keep the number of additional parameters uh, low. Uh, what flow uh, to use? Well, basically it's agnostic to the type of flow. We find that Brox flow uh, works best. Um, but if you use real-time flow, which is about seven times faster than uh, Brox flow, you get only a small uh, uh, decrease. It, uh, this is all done on uh, UCF uh, 101.24 uh, data set, uh, but it also generalizes to uh, other uh, action detection sets like uh, UCF Sports and uh, JMDB. And how does that work? Uh, Qualitatively, so here is a, a hard example from an action called uh, diving. So it's very hard to see. So we highlighted that indeed somewhere hidden in the bushes somebody is about to dive from a cliff. This is the RGB stream, how the heat, what the heat map looks like. So as you can see, so we highlighted where the action happens, but RGB stream is basically invisible. Now, after motion uh, modulation, indeed we find that it's can zoom in on the action uh, of interest, and of course this helps uh, for the detection. But I think we are reaching, uh, we're reaching the end. Uh, and there is a paradox, right? So as our understanding of events becomes more and more specific, it will be harder and harder to obtain a sufficient amount of examples. So it cannot be done, right? And not to mention boxes or, or segments and pixels and, and language and, and what have we. Um, so I think that this is uh, a dead end. Uh, that we should uh, uh, avoid, and the mission should really be to go uh, to go here. 
How to do this exactly, I don't know yet, but that's, uh, we have a room full of people uh, to do so. Well in time. Thank you very much.